Hey guys, thank you for joining me on Eat Bray Love, Megan Bray here. So I just wanted to touch base today and talk a little bit about starvation syndrome uh, and also the Minnesota starvation experiment. So this is something that is really pivotal in terms of understanding eating disorders for the person living with the eating disorder, their treating team and also their loved ones as well. So when we're talking about the Minnesota starvation experiment, this was something that was done in 1945 where the University of Minnesota got together a group of young, fit, uh, otherwise healthy men uh, and they put them through a semi-starvation experiment. So the first three months were essentially the control period where they just looked at what they were eating and their eating behaviours. The next six months were spent in a, in a semi-starvation experiment where their caloric intake was halved. Now, there is a specific number associated with this, uh, and I'm not gonna share it specifically only because I know that that can be really triggering for some, but what I will say is that the number associated with starvation is actually quite a common figure that we hear tossed around in diet culture. So, when we see people dieting, the reality is that they are putting themselves in a semi-starved state, and as you'll hear shortly, there's some pretty brutal uh, physical and psychological changes that we experience as a result of that. Uh, and in the context of eating disorders, sometimes we can see more severe starvation uh, or more prolonged starvation than what was witnessed in this study. So it's kind of worth understanding this in, in context of you know maybe your condition or someone that you uh, someone that you know and loves. So. Um, after the six months semi-starvation period, they then spent three months refeeding the participants or allowing them to kind of normalize their eating and watching what happened there as well. So in terms of the physical changes, we saw that their heart mass decreased by 25% across the semi-starvation period. Their blood pressure and their heart rate decreased as well, um, and so too did their basal metabolic rate or their metabolism. And ultimately what this was, was that their body was essentially chewing itself in order to stay alive or eating itself in order to stay alive um, and was working super hard to conserve energy because at the end of the day, your body is, its main focus is to stay alive. So that's what their bodies were kind of adapting to do. Uh, in terms of emotional changes, a lot of them started to exhibit um, thinking and behaviors that we would typically see in depression and anxiety. Um, a lot of them reported a genuine disinterest in life uh, and many of them were incredibly irritable as, as well. And, you know, I know the Snickers ads kind of talk about being hangry as a joke, but this is a legitimate thing that we see in starvation. Um, and this is also why sometimes when you present to treatment, your treating team will be talking on and on and on about the importance of nutrition prior to starting any therapeutic work or saying look you're actually not ready to undertake therapy until you get some nutrition into your body and into your mind now this can be really really frustrating for people living with the illness because they're sitting there thinking i'm depressed and anxious i feel absolutely rubbish and you're telling me to do the one thing that i absolutely fear however it is really really difficult to tell in the context of starvation whether you know your depression or, or the anxiety, whether it's you know that alone or how much of it is influenced by undernutrition. So often the focus of treatment will be getting some level of nutrition in first so that you can then go on to do the work you need to do to feel better in your better in your mind and body. Um, so please know that there is genuine scientific reasoning behind focusing on this first and this is also why when you are put in a hospital for, um, for any refeeding often you will get very little psychological support in the hospital and the reason or one of the reasons for that is because the, the primary focus of that hospitalization is to refeed so we can then kind of continue to do the therapeutic work you need to do once your brain is in a better nourished place now I know that that is imperfect, and I know in reality that can have its uh, challenges, uh, but, but just know that there is a strong physiological reason why that would be done. Um, in terms of some of the social changes, we see a lot of people kind of withdraw and isolate themselves. People kind of lose their sense of humor and they experience 
quite quite marked uh, personality changes as a result of starvation, and this was really seen in the study as well. Um, there were also some really interesting behaviours that started presenting around food. So we saw that people kind of became obsessed around food, and you know they couldn't stop thinking or talking about it. Um, there was eating in secret happening and supporting, uh, and as well as binging in some of the participants. So these were all just essentially natural responses to starvation in an otherwise healthy, healthy group. Um, and you know that's that's pretty scary. It's it's very scary in fact, and it's something that is consistently seen uh, in patients living with eating disorders. So within the study, they then spent another three months re-nourishing. Um, and across this period, a lot of these participants noted a real struggle around returning to normal and natural eating, as we would call it. Um, and they, it was last year, they released, a, or earlier this year, uh, released a 57-year follow-up of the study. And a lot of the participants reflected and said, actually, it took me a hell of a lot longer than that kind of three to six months to normalize my eating behaviors. You know, I was still um, still getting back on track kind of two years after the semi-starvation period. So it just highlights that coming back from semi-starvation can take time. And there's a lot of sort of evening out uh, processes that happen. Uh, but it is also important to note that all of the participants went on to live a, you know, really interesting and productive life uh, and you know that's something that we see in eating disorder recovery but just know that this happened over sort of a six month semi, semi starvation period and it still took that amount of time for people to get back on track so give yourself some time and you know some self-compassion if it is taking you a hell of a long time to get through your eating disorder journey it is not as simple as putting you in this controlled semi-starved environment and then saying okay great Let's go back to normal. It's something that can take a lot of time and really, really needs um, needs to be supported by a specialised treating team. So not just you know a, a GP and a dietitian, a psychologist, but but GPs, psychologists, and dietitians that have a special interest and experience in working with people with eating disorders. So thanks guys for checking in and learning a little bit about starvation. Feel free to get in touch with me with any other questions um, and I will check in with you next time. Thanks.